All right, what's up, guys? You know, I've had a couple of uh, controversial videos here in recent days, um, but this one's going to be a little bit simpler and a little bit less controversial. I know that there are probably some people here who have discovered this channel or who are watching this and who don't quite know what um, all the uh, hubbub is about. You might not be very well versed in the history of baseball. You might be a somewhat newcomer to the scene. I know what it's like. I was there once, too. You know, much uh, respect for you for just uh, having some curiosity and looking into this. I want to show you some cool things that uh, you might not realize about this uh, 1908 season that I'm playing playing with, right? You think about 1908 is a long time ago. I mean, it was, what, like 115 years ago, right? And you think, oh, man, the game must have been so much different back then. Everything was different, right? Um, uh, there were no night games. Uh, guys could throw spitballs. They could throw shine balls and all this other stuff. You hear stories about the ball being really dirtied up. You hear stories about this and that. And, I mean, a lot of that is true, but the idea that the game was completely different back then is not really true. Um, the truth is, as you start digging through newspapers, as you read newspaper accounts of games, as you look at individual games and individual exploits and stuff, you realize that the game was actually the same game that we play today. The rules were all the same. A lot of the strategy was the same, though there was a little bit more of an emphasis on small ball. Now, this isn't going to be a video about small ball where I can sort of yell at you and berate you over what I feel about this or that, right? We can have fun with that a little bit later on. What I wanted to look into is some of the stuff that makes 1908 kind of a special season, right? So we're going to go back here to this page. You saw this yesterday when I was looking at it. We're not going to screw around with any of this other weird stuff. We're just going to look here at these uh, league indexes. We'll look here first of all at uh, pitching for the uh, National and American Leagues and uh, take a look and see if we can figure out where 1908 comes in. So if you're not accustomed to this and you don't know what's so special about 1908, I will give you a hint. You go over here and you do this. And you'll see when you um, organize um, uh, everything by runs per game, uh, what you see is that there were 3.33 runs per game in the National League in 1908, which is the lowest figure in the history of baseball. If you organize this over here by runs scored over runs allowed or whatever, you will, uh, or runs scored or allowed, again, per game, this would be the same total, wouldn't it? I don't know why they have that twice. It's the same thing. It's 3.33. If you care a lot about ERA, right, which kind of made a difference back then, there were 1.63 errors per game. You uh, go click on this, you'll see, uh, come back here. The 1908 has um, technically the third lowest ERA of all time if you count 1876 and 1878. Whether you're going to count those seasons or not, I think is a somewhat questionable if you know the history of the sport. Um, I don't know so much about that, but I will tell you that, uh, yeah, 1908 had a very, very significantly low number of runs per game. I mean, 3.33 runs per game per team is the lowest in National League history. Another thing to look at here really quickly um, – Let's see if we can get this. You know, we don't quite have uh, a uh, batting average against type of statistic, but we can look at uh, hits per nine innings. And what we do that, 1908 is the lowest in National League history, allowing 7.7 .7 hits per nine innings. That's the sort of season that it was. This isn't just a couple of good pitchers. This is all across the board. Now, when we look at the American League, we're going to see similar things, right? So we'll look over here at runs per game. 1908, just a little bit behind 1968. All right, 3.44 runs per game, still minuscule, minuscule. You care about ERA, you're going to find that um, it has a 2.39 ERA, which is insane for the American League. Oh, my gosh, that's crazy. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy to see that, that low. And then uh, the other thing that we cared about, hits per nine innings again. Um, when we organize it by this, we see that 1908 does have some uh, friends here and some neighbors, right? 1908, 1909, 1910, just about the same, which says that this wasn't really so much of an outlier. 1968 with fewer hits per nine innings. Um, interesting stuff to look at and interesting stuff to notice. Now, you might wonder about this and say, well, does this sort of change the way that the game was played? A little bit, right? And we're going to take a quick look over here at batting and see what we can learn about this stuff, right? So one of the things that we're really interested in looking at is, um, of course, stolen bases and caught stealing. There's a problem with caught stealing, and the problem with the caught stealing is that uh, the stats don't exist for all these seasons, right? So if we organize this by, um, by year, we're going to see right here that uh, caught stealing, there are no caught stealing statistics for 1908. There are some statistics for some of these other years. I don't know the criteria by which these are included in this baseball reference calculation, right? We could probably look closely or probably just email them and ask what's going on. Um, but uh, now I know that we can go over to the uh, fielding total. In fact, we'll do that in a second to look at catchers caught stealing. But what you'll learn eventually is that those totals are all estimated. Those are not like actual counts. What we can look at here, though, is we can go look at stolen bases. Um, so uh, 1908 is not going to be up there in like the 1880s or these 1890 seasons in terms of stolen bases. Um, but as we go down, 
Where are we? Here we are. We can see it kind of winds up here in the National League right about here. 1.10 stolen bases per nine innings per team. Uh, it gives you sort of an idea of what we're looking at. I will be interested in seeing, by the way, what 2023 ends up looking like. It's probably not going to be quite this heavy, though, but you never know. Right? Remember, this is an average, um, including everybody. Uh, seasons that we think of as big uh, stolen base seasons from the 80s, like 1980, end up down here with 0.95. gives you some sort of frame of reference. We'll look at that here for the American League. We'll see 1908. Remember, there was none of those 19th century seasons in the American League. Here's 1908. It's actually a little bit below its competitors, or its uh, competitors. It's uh, most um, uh, closest, uh, the closest seasons that um, it has in terms of time. At 1.09, <clears throat> the uh, first season here that shows up that you might recognize is probably 76, which is 0.87. So there's a significant difference between those two seasons. So you can see there was definitely a lot of sort of playing, you know, not just station by station baseball, but trying to bring the game to the defense. And we'll be able to see that here in a second when we look at uh, uh, at uh, uh, air totals. Now here comes sacrifice hits. Whether sacrifice hits includes sacrifice flies in this total or not is something I don't know. If you do know how this works for baseball reference, please let me know. I'm not certain. I'm interested in knowing just for personal reasons. But yeah, 1.33 sacrifice hits per game tells you that if nobody's scoring runs and nobody's getting hits, then a lot more people are going to bunt. There is a chicken and egg situation here, right? And we're going to talk more and more about this, right? Is it true that the fact that you can't get a hit is causing you to bunt or are you not able to get a hit because you're bunting too much, right? Let me know what you think. I don't know. Another odd thing I'll show you is would you think of 1927 as having a lot of sacrifice hits? I wouldn't, but it does. Interesting. When we go over here to the American League, 1908 actually is down here. So it's not quite that extreme, but its total is larger, 1.27 per nine innings. Again, you see seasons you wouldn't expect to have high numbers of sacrifices, 26, 27, 20, 23, 24, 22, 21. I thought that this is when sacrifice hits all went away, right, because of Babe Ruth and because of power hitting. Maybe not. Now, let's say that you're not an idiot like me and that instead of wanting to look at, like, batting average, which, um, I mean, we know is going to be low, I had 2.39 in the National League, and uh, uh, let's see. We'll do this again here. Here you go, 2.39 in the American League, right? That's pretty low. Let's say, though, that you're not an idiot like that. You're like, well, I'd rather see on-base percentage. Let's see how the on-base percentages stack up. Yet 1908 um, in the National League is right here under, again, a bunch of 19th century seasons. And all of these seasons have different rules, right? It's 1893 that you have the real cutoff. 1908 had a 2.9, uh, 0.299 on base percentage, which is low. That is low. Lowest of all time, unless you count the uh, crazy seasons. In the American League, 2.94. Right? So, again, lowest of all time, unless you count these um, other seasons. That's really low. Right. And uh, you want to look at OPS because you care about uh, runs created and you know that this um, uh, will go along together closely with that 0.605 OPS in the National League and in the American League, your OPS is 0.598, which is incredibly low. I mean, we're talking again, not about a single player. We're talking about the whole league. Right. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. One more thing to look at. Actually, I guess we'll, we'll look at two more things here quick. I shouldn't have closed that out so quickly because if you're not familiar with this part of the history, you might not know what happens over here. Look at home runs. Um, yeah, in 1908, you're looking at, uh, what, uh, 0.12 home runs per game. You know, the better way to look at this, though, probably is to going to be looking over the pitcher stats because then we can do it per nine innings, right? So in the National League, you're looking at uh, 0.1 home runs per nine inning which is uh, really low, really low. And um, also in the American League, you're looking at 0.1 home runs per nine inning, right? So, I mean, we're talking like lowest of all time, right? Um, now, we have had a couple in NP3. 0.1 is not zero. So remember that. It's not like nobody could hit a home run. In fact, Rube uh, Waddell hit a home run uh, for the uh, St. Louis Browns in 1908. I found the newspaper clipping. I had no idea. And then I found it. And I was like, I got to write about this. All right, so we're going to look at a couple other things over here quickly in fielding, and uh, then I will um, end this video mercifully for you. Um, the uh, interesting thing that we see here with fielding is going to be over here in uh, terms of caught stealing. So this includes the uh, catcher caught stealing rates that have been estimated. And it's estimated using a pretty innovative idea that includes the things that we know and kind of makes a couple estimations based on what we don't know. In the National League, we're looking at 0.93 caught stealing per game, and that will give us a caught stealing percentage of 45.7, which is one of the highest of all time, right? I mean, that's a significant number. 
Again, some of these seasons are seasons you wouldn't expect to have high cost stealing percentages like 1955. That's interesting. Interesting to look at. And the other thing we'll look at quickly is airs. Now, airs are always going to be dominated by these early, early seasons um, because gloves are just better nowadays. 1.63 airs per nine innings. Um, I'm sorry, airs per game. Um, and uh, so, I mean, there you have it. <laughs> That's uh, uh, quite a few and uh, more than uh, definitely what we would see today. But it's not that bad, right? I've replayed the 1900 season before. We have 2.43. That's a lot worse, right? Look at the same thing here. We'll look at cost stealing really quick. 1908 in the American League is 0.91 in the cost stealing percentage. Um, again, is somewhat high over here at 45.5. Again, when you look through this, there are seasons you mostly didn't expect. Again, these are seasons in the 50s, right? And you wouldn't expect the 1920 American League to have such a high cost stealing percentage, but there it is. And for 1920, we know that this number is legit. This isn't estimated. This is actually what the number is. So go figure. And then when we look here at errors in the American League again, we'll see 1.79, similar to what the National League was as well at the same time. And then one other thing, just because I like team defense, right? Let's look at double plays. Look at the double play totals. Now, 1908 is not going to come up here in the top of double plays um, turned per game. It's going to be at the bottom. 0.48 double plays turned per game in the National League. Isn't that interesting, right? What season do you think comes out near the top? Well, if we scroll down a little bit here, we will see. There it is, 1949, with almost twice as many double plays per game as you had 1908 in the National League. I bet you didn't expect that. American League double plays per turn per game, 1.20 through the American League, which is the record. Now, my Diamond Mind baseball replay is way above this. It's going to be closer to two or something higher than that. There's a problem with the game engine when that's happening. When we flip this around, 0.54 double plays per game in uh, the uh, American League in 1908. So it gives you an idea of what we're talking about. Now, there's other stuff that we could mention here. Um, I don't want this video to be too long and it's really just me sort of clicking around and acting like a fool. Um, but uh, in future videos, I think we're going to look a little bit more into the actual full-out run scoring environment so we can see what's different. 1908 is one of the harder seasons to replay in baseball history. It's a very difficult season to model because this stuff is all off. Regardless of the game that you're using, even if it's a computerized game, even if it's OTP, right, and you think this is the most fancy game ever made or whatever, you're going to have some sort of algorithm that is based upon certain assumptions about how the game of baseball was played and it'll be based upon certain assumptions over how hits translate or how hits and walks and guys on base translate into runs or how you know um, different situations will translate into like a double play or a strikeout or something like that when you play with some of these seasons though like 1949 1908 1930 1968 um, and some of the other usual suspect type seasons you're going to see that these numbers get a little bit wonky this is a good way for us to test these uh, simulators that claim to be extraordinarily realistic because we're kind of putting them really, really through the ringer on this one. Now, we're not quite over to May yet in 1908, but once May 1st rolls around, I'm going to do a little bit of poking around, and we'll have a video in which we look and see just how good uh, Skeetersoft NP3 really is doing with some of these stats. So we'll see what happens. It gives you something to look forward to as we move along. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, let me know, as always, in the comments what you think. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.